Hello, this is Roland Junk from Eblan Canada. So today, of course, we, let's talk about this beautiful tool, smart wiring. Smart wiring, smart production is awesome because why? It actually tells me exactly all the details I need to know to do the wiring with the 3D experience and even the details on each connection. Uh, it will even give me the perfect routing. Now, how do I get there? Let's start at the beginning where this all starts. So let's close this. This is for the electrician. But how do we get there? How does the routing work in ePlan? Well, number one, it all starts with the schematics. Number one, in the schematics, you have to make sure that you have unique device tags. You can assign potentials. These potentials are nothing else than either pre-established potentials like zero VDC being a certain <coughs> color wire gauge. You have to make sure that your key nodes are correct here. So sometimes you have to actually do individual connections, whatever. And the terminals have to be uniquely device tagged also. So TB1, terminal number five. And then I also add one small detail and it, on, on top is the connection point designation to refer to which connection point has to be connected. Now, the 3D, 3D is easy. Everyone actually manages to do this. So on a 3D like this, you have obviously the backplate, uh, which contains a couple of components. All these components are actually uh, primarily dragged and dropped from the uh, schematic uh, in which you assigned the part number. So here, if you have to do some changes, very easy, let's say this, stretch it out, you have a component, you take that component, you drag and drop it on top of it, bingo, and everyone is happy. It works perfectly fine. And as you can see here, I also viewed the connection point directions, which actually will give me all the details about how things are to be connected. So on pin number one, pin number three, pin number five, connections are going out. So all you can see, we have a lot of these arrows going out. And this will then enable me the individual uh, terminals to be uh, hooked up. If you have some additional things here, I seem to have two small things that are not placed. This is fine. This is a push button. Push button on doors may also be a bit more of a special item. Here, let's go to the doors. You have to figure out, okay, when I place these push buttons, how do or how does the manufacturer expect me to place these individual components? So I have, of course, the knob and I have the latch and connection in behind. So let's say we place this here, maybe on the front view. I'll start with the knob itself. So maybe I want it right there. Boom. Okay, this is cool so far, which basically place the knob right on the surface. Now what you have to think about is actually how you will put the latch and the connections. As you get closer, you can see we have some uh, special mounting points, in this case here for the latch, and bingo, it's done. Now you have to figure out how do I wire up from here back to the back plate. So my trick here would be to actually turn on or show individually the back plate, maybe make it a little bit easier without the mounting clearances in here. And I would actually think about, first of all, how do I get from the door here, from the door over to the back plate itself? I'm gonna insert a small, very, very straight forward, and you can see here, watch on the left-hand side. As I move over, you can see that I'm actually hitting the profile left door, like the corner here. So that would be maybe a, a, a small spot to start with. I'm gonna rotate this around and my aim is to get right here into the corner, either the corner or the center point of this dock here that is there, okay? Now, as you actually place this here, you can see it actually hooks up to right there. So that works out perfectly for me. I have no issue. And then I will be going here on that layout space on the door inside. I will activate 
directly this surface. Why? Because I want to collect all the wires over here to the left hand side, go down, and then I'm going to hook up to that specific point here. And how do, to do this is by just canceling the direct activation and it will hook up to that dot. Hit the space button and it's done. So again, like I said, door inside, activate directly, just specify here so you have the same surface as where the push buttons are. And there we go. So this will most likely, if you run here the uh, routing, you will see the wires will actually then jump to uh, most of these and then run back to the backplate. Now, something did not exactly work, as you can see, because this guy here is up in the air. So the connection to the backplate did not work well. So let's see if I actually show the backplate again and I, I try to connect. You can see that some something went wrong here with this connection. So this connection did not really hook up to where I wanted it to connect. I to do is I'm just going to try again. And this sometimes happens because when you place these, right, you have to place them without the uh, activation. You have to basically start, let's say, here on that corner or in that corner, and then just go up to the other top point here. And you will see as soon as it actually picks up the right connection here, it will actually tell you because, boom, it jumps onto it, right? Boom, like this. And now if I try again, so forget about this one here that was wrong and, and not placed correctly. If you do again the routing, uh, primarily what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select the push buttons and route those ones. You will see they will actually not connect straight. They will connect through this line that I just chose here and they will go directly to eat all of these co other components in the back. Now, technically, when you do the wiring, the, the routing, it's fairly easy because ePlan will route to the shortest way possible. Technically, and often what I recommend when you want to check those, I recommend to actually do this. Go here to the settings, go under the uh, connections default properties, right? And make your default color here pink. You'll see what this does is basically when you run the wire, wiring okay when you run it it usually generates what we call 3d connections you can check them out here in this navigator filter them with the 3d connection and here these are the, the wires that have been generated so far i'm going to generate select all of them control all and i'm going to delete them so I'm, I'm basically just starting over from scratch just to show you and the way you do this is you can do this one component at a time or all the components that are on the back plate, for instance, and it will route automatically all the wires. You will see some of these wires are actually then colored pink. Now, what does that pink actually means? This pink means that this wire that actually comes here from a wire set that has not been assigned to any specific um wire colors so now you have two choices you can of course typically this would be attached to the neutral side and the other one would be attached to let's say the um, um, um to the positive side or to the control side so you'd have blue on one side white white uh, uh, white on the other side so technically what did i miss out here well technically this is a case where I cannot count on the regular potentials to actually color the wires. I have to somewhat count on something else, which is primarily here the, um, the, the wiring itself. So here, I'm just going to check it out. Here, we have a wire designation that pops out, but this wire designation that pops up here for whatever reason, I did not display any colors or whatever. That's fine. But now I can assign a specific color. I can do it this way here by assigning like a blue wire color. I can assign an 18 uh, wire gauge just by assigning it. And that would work 
perfectly fine. It's not a problem. It's, it's going to be a blue wire on this side. What I could also do is this wire here. I have a small um, toolbar here where I can actually assign a white. And then here, 18 gauge, unfortunately, is not on that. I'll make it 16 gauge. And bingo, now this wire is and became uh, the right color. And if I rerun, let's say we go back to here, CR1. So I can go here, uh, back into my uh, control relay here. I can check it out. I can try it out. If I rerun it, right, in particular on the uh, front end, you will see that the pink wires will go away. And now we have a blue and a white wire, as you can see, that actually appeared here in the background. And this is how you actually can fine tune all of these wires to make sure that you have the right color if the color is not assigned through the potential. Now, another interesting thing also is that the routing also works if you do not have any connection details. Now, assuming that the connections are like P1, P2, S1, S2 correspond to everything that is one goes to the top, everything that goes with two goes to the bottom, then you are working out perfectly fine. Otherwise, it's always good to have the 3D model and then assign the connections itself. I'm going to pick one that doesn't have any connections just to show you quickly how that can be done. So here, for instance, if we take this FU, this FU, for instance, FU8, does not have, for the moment, the appropriate connection designations. All it does, it actually calculates the wire length to the center of the component at the very top. But we actually know that one and three are actually going to the top. And where are they coming in? Let me just quickly define them. It only takes a few seconds, really. All you have to do is here insert what we call a connection point definition. So you choose the surface here to actually align the wires going out. And then you can say, let's take tip the bottom portion here. That would be my connection number one, obviously, right? Now, of course, because I'm on the far out outer corner, I would maybe add here like a three quarters of an inch just to go inside a little bit further in. And there we go, we have the first connection. Now, in the same alignment, I can actually place this one here, which will be connection number uh, three, and then say, okay, add also like a three quarters of an inch. To actually make sure the wire goes far, like three quarters inside. Now, I'm gonna just rotate this a little bit. So here from the original rotation, let's just rotate so we can see this portion of the corner. And we will insert again, same thing, define the orientation, take this guy here, that would be connection number two, uh, connection number two with an extra uh, three quarters of an inch. Here we go, next one right there, that would be connection number four, and nothing else than a three quarters of an inch added to it. And there we go, we have now these connections. Now what happens if I rerun the routing? Well, you will see the routing will now go straight in at the very top. If we actually take a look here, it goes in right at the top, right in here into these connections. Let me just take out the connection point and you can see they go exactly there. So the wire length is exactly now calculated from that point on. Now, where the, do they go? Obviously, this is the connection one and two. Let's go and check it out one and two on this side here, one and two, you can see one goes down at the bottom, one goes to the top. Right now they are assigned with a pink color. What would be missing here? Well, to get some coloring in here, I would recommend to actually assign L1 and L2. Now these L1s and L2s are actually defined through some uh, specific connection informations and we call them here potential definition points. So you could actually go up here and say, this is 
part of L1. L1 has a specific color and gauge already assigned in previous pages. And this here is actually L2. And it is also colored and assigned with some colors. You will see this right away. If you run here connections update, you will see how the colors actually change and even the gauges change. And that immediately, if you go back here to the routing and you try it out again, will immediately regenerate those as the new wire colors and gauges, in this case, black and red, right? So you got the idea. So once you have and you are satisfied with your routing here, you can, of course, say, okay, the wires, even though they have not been assigned uh, with the proper color in the schematics, we actually know that my default color will be, let's say, red, a certain gauge, uh, in this case, American wire gauge 16 or 18, whatever. And then, of course, if you rerun the routing, this will immediately run through the whole panel, right? And just reconsider the wires as you just mentioned. Those pink wires are then gone. As you can see here, no pink wires anymore. Even if I take out here, hide the door, you can see everything is actually colored now exactly the way I want. And we have now the exact length for each of these wires. How do I get it over to uh, smart wiring? Fairly easy. You just here go to export, export to the wire, uh, to the manufacturing data here, smart production collection, and you just send it out. Now, this will prepare all the data in such a way that you can create a new order in smart wiring, smart production, and start working on the smart wire. So I hope this will help you set the routing and uh, actually take benefit of smart wiring, which is quite amazing because if you looked up a few of my videos, you actually know that if you can prefabricate the wires before the assembly is actually done, before you even get all of your components, you can save time on fabrication you can probably save up to 33% in your time frame of fabrication because you can prefabricate the wires way ahead of time. Please take advantage of this smart wiring. Call up your ePlan team to see how you can benefit from that smart wiring concept and use smart wiring down in the shop floor. Thank you. This was Roland from ePlan Canada.